Who put Bella in the witch elm? Let's find out, shall we? Hi, I'm Chris, and this is True Crime Recaps. This is a story of a wartime spy. Or maybe it's about the sad demise of a troubled woman. Although some people say it's actually the tale of a sinister occult ritual. It all depends on who you ask. It started on a late afternoon in Hagley Wood, on a private estate in the West Midlands region of England in April 1943, when four teenage boys snuck into the woods looking for wild bird eggs to steal. And one of those boys was Bob Farmer. While he was looking for eggs, he spotted an old witch elm tree. So he decided to climb it and see what he could find. But instead of a bird's nest, he discovered something extraordinary. A mystery that baffles people to this day. Nestled in the tree's hollow trunk was a human skull. Two crooked teeth stuck out from the mouth, and a patch of rotting flesh remained on its forehead, with strands of long, filthy hair still attached. When his friends saw what he'd found, the four of them panicked and agreed to keep their gruesome discovery a secret, since they weren't supposed to be in those woods in the first place. But... It didn't take long for one of the boys to crack and tell his parents everything. When the police took a closer look, they found more than a skull inside the witch elm. There was also a shoe, a fake gold wedding band, and a nearly complete skeleton with some fragments of clothing still clinging to its bones. A piece of taffeta fabric was found stuffed in her mouth. Was it a clue? Was she suffocated to death? In life, she was a woman around 35 years old with dark hair and teeth that would have been memorable to anyone who met her. She had given birth to a child at some point, and the decomposition of her body indicated she'd been dead for at least a year and a half. Because it's impossible to stuff a body into a tree trunk after rigor mortis sets in, she was probably still alive or, more likely, very recently dead when she went into the witch elm. Two other details were particularly disturbing. She was missing one of her hands. Upon further investigation, the hand was found near the witch elm, and her arm was left 13 feet away from the tree, which is something that was done after a witch was killed in ancient times. Coincidence? Or something more sinister? It's not every day that a woman's body, minus a hand, is found inside a tree. And the story made local headlines. Because her teeth were so unique, investigators initially thought it would be easy to use dental records to figure out who she was. But they couldn't find any matches. Furthermore, this was the year 1943, and World War II was raging in Europe. And countless people had gone missing for one reason or another. Which meant investigators were stretched thin. And without a lot to go on, the case of the mysterious woman in the witch elm slowly went cold. And that's when things got really weird. Fast forward to 1944, and the story takes on a second life. In the town of Old Hill, not far from the wooded estate where the witch elm stood, mysterious graffiti appeared on an abandoned building. It read, Who put Bella down the witch elm? The graffiti was done in white chalk in big printed letters. Taken out of context, it sounded like complete nonsense. Or maybe just a really cool name for an album. But to the people of the West Midlands, there was no doubt what, or should I say who, this message was about. Soon, more graffiti appeared on buildings throughout the area. They were seemingly done by the same person, with white chalk in the same large printed letters and they were all variations on the same theme. One simply read, Hagleywood Bella. Eventually, whoever was leaving these messages settled on who put Bella in the witch elm. And from that moment on, Bella became the deceased woman's de facto name. Needless to say, the graffiti got people talking about the body in the witch elm again. But who was writing the messages? Bella was a very common name in the region at the time, but it could also have been short for Belladonna, a deadly plant used in black magic. Over the next few years, several theories about Bella developed, and here are a few of the favorites. Three years before the body was found, a sex worker named Bella disappeared. And did she meet an untimely end at the hands of the wrong customer? Possibly, but 
In this case, the timeline just doesn't make any sense. The woman found in the witch elm was dead for at least 18 months, which would mean poor Bella would have had to have been kept alive for a year and a half before she was killed. It's not impossible, but it doesn't seem very likely. This next theory originally came from a woman named Una Mossop. Apparently, her ex-husband once confessed that he was involved in the case. While out drinking with a friend, they met a woman at a bar who wanted to party. But when she had too much to drink and passed out, Una Mossop's ex-husband and his friend decided to teach her a lesson. According to him, they carried her unconscious body out to a wooded area and stuck her in a hollow tree. But according to Una, they didn't mean to kill her. Now, this could be true, but it doesn't quite seem like the whole story. Although I certainly hope that no other women found themselves in a tree trunk after throwing back a few with her ex-husband. Remember the hand and the arm found near the tree? Was this some kind of ritual murder? Professor Margaret Murray thought so, and born in British colonial India in 1863, Professor Murray was an Egyptologist, anthropologist, historian, and folklorist known to practice magic in her private life. And she offered up one of the most fascinating theories about what happened. She maintained that Bella's death had all the signs of a murder committed in the name of black magic. The elm tree has a long association with witchcraft and magic, but to the professor, the biggest clue was Bella's missing hand. She thinks the hand was meant to symbolize a hand of glory. In magical terms, a hand of glory comes from an executed criminal and has supernatural powers. Legend has it, it can open any door and freezes anyone who gets in your way. The professor also suggested that Bella's death was connected to another unsolved case in the area, the murder of Charles Walton on Valentine's Day in 1945. He was found dead in a hedgerow, beaten about the head with his own walking stick, and pinned to the ground with his pitchfork. His murder was never solved. To the professor, both murders bore signs of occult involvement, and she maintained that both crimes were part of a pattern of ritual murders in the area. And we have to admit, leaving the woman's hand and arm near the tree was creepy, but we can't rule out the conclusion reached by the police that while Bella's body was interred in the witch elm all that time, some of her remains came loose from the body, whether by chance or by wild animals, and simply ended up near the tree. But who was she in life? That question brings us to our final theory, and it might just be the craziest of all. In the early 1950s, a woman calling herself Anna wrote a letter to a local newspaper, and she alleged that Bella was not British, but was in fact part of a ring of Nazi spies sent to infiltrate the region. And there's no reason to believe that there were Nazi spies in the West Midlands during the time Bella's body was discovered, but absent any proof, Anna's letter was dismissed as the product of an overactive imagination. However, declassified wartime documents from the British Security Service gave new life to this theory. In the winter of 1941, two years before Bella's body was discovered, a spy named Joseph Jacobs was arrested. When he was taken into custody and questioned, he told his interrogators a remarkable story about a woman named Clara Barol. He first met her in Hamburg, Germany, where she was a cabaret singer, well-connected with Nazi officials. Eventually, Joseph and Clara were recruited to spy for the Nazis in England, and she arrived shortly before experts think Bella in the Witch Elm was murdered. He arrived after her, but he was never able to make contact. So was she the dead woman in the tree? Possibly. She was approximately the same age as Bella, and furthermore, Clara lived and performed in the West Midlands before the war, and it was said she spoke English in the accent of the region. She disappeared off the grid in 1941, right around the time that Bella would have been killed. However, records unearthed on josephjacobs.info show that Clara died from an overdose of Veronal in Berlin in 1942. But then again, can we trust Nazi-era death records for a rumored spy? Maybe yes, maybe no. Fast forward to today and we are no closer to uncovering the truth behind Bella's death, but 
we have some ideas. Life in World War II era Europe was marked by death, disappearances, and savage violence. And based on the meager possessions found with Bella's body, experts have good reason to believe she was European, but not British. Now, looking at the facts of the case, the state in which her body was found, and the clues she left behind, we believe Bella was a casualty of war, be it from a misunderstanding or through her own involvement. I'll leave you with two important footnotes in the case of Bella in the Witch Elm. In a murder case, the skull is one of the most valuable pieces of evidence you can hope to have. The local police jurisdiction has changed hands multiple times since the woman's body was found in the Witch Elm, and today, no one knows where Bella's skull is. The most critical piece of evidence in the case has been lost. In 2018, a facial reconstruction of Bella as she would have appeared before her death was done using original police photographs of her skull. No one has come forward, and the case remains unsolved. Graffiti asking who put Bella in the witch elm still pop up every once in a while. And though several decades have passed since four teenagers found a woman's body unceremoniously stuffed into the trunk of a witch elm, it is possible that someone out there today knows what really happened to Bella, who she was, who is responsible for her death, and why she died. Until then, the case of Bella in the Witch Elm will remain one of Britain's most enduring unsolved mysteries. Thanks for letting me catch you up on this case, but don't go away. More recaps are coming up right now, and if you like getting all the crime in half the time, please remember to tap subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a story. Until next time, take care.